Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650E right here. Welcome to season three of the new bike build series. This is the series where we're taking this 2018 BMW S1000 RR premium package that I purchased here from my good friends at Sills BMW. And with the help of our channel sponsors, we are adding a bunch of custom parts to this bike. And then at the end of the build series, we make it available to everyone viewing this video. Information on how you might win this motorcycle is in the description. In today's episode, Zach is going to adjust the suspension sag settings on this beautiful motorcycle, which already has BST carbon fiber wheels installed and boy do they look magnificent we just cleaned them with some Mo Motul polish I tell you that stuff works like a dream I think I'm even gonna put a link to that polish in the description as well because it's just so awesome Zach hey how's it going everybody welcome back <laughs> hey been riding around the S1000 getting some miles on it. Yeah, I gotta say those carbon fiber wheels really do make a difference that, that thing is a knife through traffic. It's awesome. Wow I'm not surprised to hear that man. I love car I love carbon fiber wheels. Yeah, ceramic bearings not sure so not sure I'm sold on them yet, but we'll see. Yeah Um. Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about suspension sag and how mm -hmm. you set it and uh, where to get some information on it and we're going to set the bike up for you, which it's pretty much come sprung for, so I'd be surprised if we have to make too many adjustments. Okay. And uh, BMW with this DDC system runs a really tight, stiff spring, and uh, they don't run much sag either compared to what is normally the value. So we'll go over okay. all that. Yep. Uh, we got a cool product from Pitbull. You can see off to the side here. Mm -hmm. They're called jack stands, and we're going to use them to take our initial measurements because we need to see how far the bike extends with no weight on it. So we need the back wheel off the ground and the front, front wheel off the ground. Okay. Fortunately, we don't have frame sliders on it yet. We'd be able to get the front wheel off the ground with these jack stands really easy if we had frame sliders. Yep. But we just haven't installed them yet, and I don't even think we have them. Yeah, Manny must be uh, in, in, in process of sending those to us. Yeah, I believe he is. So uh, we're waiting for a big box on that. Uh, the new Brembo brake rotors, they're... They're pretty sweet. They're a little, uh, they're a little noisier than the stock ones. They squeak a bit, mm -hmm. and you hear them rattle because they were looser on the bobbins. But they have tons of bite, tons of stopping force. Oh wow! Already, so I can't wait to see what the rest of the Brembo system does. Oh, Hopefully, yeah. the master cylinder smooths it out a little bit. It's okay. almost too much initial bite on it. Oh wow! But it, it definitely gets you stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's get going. Uh, to get it up onto this jack stand, we'll take our rear measurement first. We're going to use our front and rear stands. Okay. I already have some spools on here. Temporary spools because we have some red ones. These are the workshop spools that we just use on everything. Mm, it's in a little bit. Got to make a little adjustment here. There we go. I want to make sure you're centered in the spool because if it goes in too far, it could dig into your swing arm. And that's oh, no yeah. good. That would suck. So we'll put it on the rear stand, and then let's get it on the front stand. Well, somebody's happy. Right. <laughs> Someone around here is happy, yeah. Yeah, we went from a grumpy cat to a happy guy, huh? A cool, happy guy. <laughs> yeah, nice. All right. Then once we get it up on both stands, we can slide our jack stands underneath the foot pegs. And we got to be careful on this model because we don't have rear sets on it yet either, so these fold. So obviously that wouldn't hold it. You need to make sure you're all the way in. Okay. And you can see just by the shape how this would sit if we did have a frame slider. Oh yeah, man. We would just, this is a quick adjust. You pull this out, we would slide it up so that it would fit right underneath our frame slider here. Oh, yeah. And then we could take it off the front stand and our wheel would be left. We could leave it on the rear stand even. And our front wheel would be left in the air. We could get our forks off. We could take our measurements, but yeah. we don't have that yet. Maybe we'll just show it once we get those mounted. Yeah, we will show that. That's awesome. Awesome idea. So I want to make sure it's at the same height. I think it makes it down one too low. No, must have been the right one. Slide that underneath, and now we're gonna remove our front stand first. Okay. 
So far, so good. Yeah, everything's good put. I want to make sure we're nicely in there. Now, we can't take our static sag measurement on the rear stand because the bike's still being squished. Okay. And also with the DDC, we can't take it with the bike off. We're going to have to turn the bike on. So once we pull this rear stand out, our wheel yeah. is now floating. And you saw it drop just a little bit even. Yeah. There's that little bit of preload on there. That's called a static sag, the amount that the bike just rests on the spring. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on just so everything evens itself out. And then what measurement we use to set sag is we're going to use millimeters, which is the small dashes. These are centimeters. Okay. We're going to measure in millimeters. Okay. And what we need to do, this tape measure is actually meant for setting sag because it would sit in a hollow axle and then you can pull it up and oh, that's cool, man. and go like that. Yeah. Because we need to pick a spot that's repeatable. So we're going to go right to this corner here. Sometimes if you don't have a good spot, I take my painter's tape that I use for everything. Yeah. And you'll just mark your spot. And then you can even put a line on it so we know right where we're going to go every time. Because we want to be as accurate as possible. Okay. Okay. So now I can put my sag scale in there. We'll run that up right to that line. And then you need to decide, are you going to hold this straight or are you just going to let it take its shape? Mm -hmm. So in this instance, I don't like how it's bent like that. I'm actually just going to flip it and we'll hook it down there and we'll take our measurement at the line. And that is 615 millimeters. Okay. So that's our free sag measurement. So we're going to write that down. Okay. So our front free length was 615. Now we need to get our front free length. We're going to have to have a uh, smiley guy over there give us a hand. <laughs> you want to pick up on the front of the bike. Eve's going to lean down on the back a little bit. Yep. I'm going to take... Here, I'll come over here real quick. Yep, so sure. Do this. It doesn't take much at all, Rich. You'll be able to do it with one hand. On the front, it's real easy. We're going to go underneath the dust seal, and we're going to go right to this solid piece because that's never going to change. So you can see right now we're at 100 millimeters. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to wind up at about 103 or something once we take the weight off. Okay. All right, go ahead and lean down on the back. You pick up on the front, Rich. Ooh, that actually hit a lot. And that moved us to... Okay, you can sit it down. That moved a lot. Oh boy. It moved from 100 to 105 all the way up to 115. So about what I guessed it. Okay. So that is 115. And also I'm gonna zero, and now we'll leave the compression where it's at, it's fine. Okay, so now we need to take it back off these stands. Now if we take a measurement, we're gonna get what we saw before up front, and a little less actually, we got 95 millimeters. Okay. So 115 minus 95, 20 millimeters, that's our uh, static sag. Okay. So that's actually, that's a fair amount. I'm surprised it was that much. Um, we're gonna go ahead now and we'll move the bike to the bench because you're gonna need to sit on it in riding position. Okay. And that's where we're gonna get our measurements that we're gonna subtract. So we got the bike secured in the work stand. Eve's good to sit on it. If you don't have this, you want to have a couple people holding it, but you don't want them to put weight on it. Again, you can't be on stands. There's a front stand called a paddock chalk that works really well. We have one, but it's currently not here. You can just roll the front wheel into it and it holds the bike because the rider needs to be sitting on the bike in its riding condition. Should have all your gear on, everything, so we get an accurate measurement. But we're just going to do it in the street close, so it's fine. Okay. So go ahead, jump on up, and assume the riding position. All right. And the key has to be on again since we have a DDC bike. Okay. So we have moved down to 580. So the rear is pretty easy. We just take that measurement, write it underneath our 615. So now the front, we have to take a couple extra measurements because we have to count for all the stiction in the fork pushings and the dust seals and everything. So he's going to stay in the riding position. I'm going to push the front of the bike downward and let it go and take a measurement. 
that measurement is 77. Now I'm going to take the bike and I'm going to put the front end up and let it go. And then I'm going to take another measurement and that is 78. So not much difference. That's good. That means there's not a lot of stiction in our front end. If they were exactly the same, that means you'd have zero stiction. So now we need the average of those. So we just add them together. 77, 78 and divide by 2. I'm not that good. Gives us 77.5. Okay. <laughs> And we subtract that from our 115 that we started with. This is 37.5. Which again, usual street numbers are 30 to 35 millimeters, so we really wouldn't have to adjust it. We might just crank it in a little bit. Race is 25 to 30, we would definitely want to increase the spring preload. So there's two things when you're looking at a spring. There's preload and then there's spring rate. So the preload, we're just going to squish the spring and it's going to hold the bike up. But if we had to add too much preload, that would be bad because our spring would be too crunched and our suspension is going to work properly. We need to go to the next spring rate. And what a spring rate is, is how much force it takes to move a spring a distance. So they're rated in pounds per inch. So maybe it takes 50 pounds to move a spring an inch. If you want to need another one, it would be 55 pounds to move that spring. So it's a heavier spring than a lighter spring. Uh, they also are rated in kilogram, millimeters, and newton millimeters. It's just a force and a distance measurement on the spring. So let's go ahead. You can hop off. We'll add some preload to both of these and take some other measurements to show how that changes. So throughout the years, all motorcycle are different. They have tons of different fork styles, and there's different ways that you adjust the preload. This bike with the DDC is super easy. This is our spring preload. It's only done on the one shock because this one houses all the electronics. Okay. And since we want to increase it, we're going to move this inward and we're going to go by number of turns. I don't believe this clicks or anything. We could also measure this, but we need some kind of reference. So, I mean, we're going to set, I'm going to set this normal. We're not going to go by the book. We're going to go to like third, we're going to try for 34 or so. Okay. So I think we're going to need about three whole turns. So that's half a turn. One turn, half a turn, two turns, half a turn, three turns. And generally, a turn is good for a millimeter. Not always. Depends on the manufacturer again. And then on our rear shock, it's also easy on the BMW if you come around. Mm -hmm. Take a look right in there. All I have to do is turn this bolt, yep. and it's going to move that collar on the spring, and it's going to squish our spring. So that's how we adjust the preload there. So I need a different length of extension. Uh, some bikes have this style. This is off a dirt bike that's in for service, actually, where it has a lock collar and an adjustment collar. So we have to break that lock collar free, and then we physically turn this collar. You can see it follows the threads, and it squishes the spring. Okay. A lot of bikes are like that, and then... Some are even more basic where you just turn it and it has a ramp and they're in pre, preset positions and it'll just click. It'll click into a higher or lower position. That's usually how the Japanese bikes are and cruisers. So this one's a little harder to count and I don't think it clicks either. BMW must have changed their spring rates. These used to be really stiff. All right. So we've added a fair amount of preload to the front and rear, so our numbers should have gotten a little smaller on our second measurement. Let's okay. go ahead, we'll double check it and see where we're at. So one of the viewers of the New Bike Build series that lives in the great state of New York trailered his s 1000 rr all the way from New York to here, Sills BMW, to have Zach install some parts 
some of the very same parts that he saw being added to the new bike build series machine. And he purchased these parts from Moto Million, so a special shout out to Manny from Moto Million. But this is the power of social media. You know, this man saw some awesome parts, purchased them. He saw an awesome uh, tech installing them, and he's brought his bike here for Zach to work on it. Totally outstanding. Traveled a great distance, too, probably 500 miles or so, one way, <laughs> just to have Zach work on his bike. So that's outstanding. And as you can see, he's getting the Samco blue hoses. He's getting all the stuff that we added to our Motorsports S1000 RR. He even got a set of, oh, here they are, Rotobox Boost wheels. So that is awesome. That is totally outstanding. Yeah, I was just telling folks, Zach, that guy came from New York yeah. just to have you, the master tech, work on it, man. He's an awesome guy, too. Is he? I haven't met yeah. him yet. I want to meet him when he comes to pick his bike up. Yeah, hopefully he can be here. I'm sure he'd get a kick out of it. No, dude just wanted to meet Grumpy Cat. That was all. Oh, he just wanted to meet the Grumpy Cat? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. I told him the only way he could. It was if he scheduled his bike for Zach to work on it. Wow. <laughs> When's he coming back, Rich? Do you know? Uh, on the schedule, he is scheduled for Saturday. This Saturday? Yes. No wonder Zach is running around like a freaking madman. Yeah. <laughs> we did do a little, uh, he really, really wanted an air horn. Oh, wow. I like really, Mustang really Game. did not know if there was room to fit one, and this just barely fits. How's right it here. sound? Like, <laughs> Air horn. <laughs> Does he live in New York City? Is that yeah. from, yeah, that's... Yeah, I knew it since he was from New York. Yeah. I live by the horn. I'll try to do the best I could, and it barely fits right there. Wow. The and clearing the fork and everything. Honestly, Zach, I like that. I might put one on one of my bikes. No. no. no, that's, no, that's no he says, no, not again. I Usually know. I take the horns off. Yeah. But uh, that and a USB cable thing that was additional. I put a rapid bike system on this. Okay. First one of them I've done. Oh, yeah. Sweet. It's, it's pretty nice. It has a lot more wire harness than uh -huh. the commander just because it's a little bit nicer but yeah there's a lot of wires so we're going to be putting that on our bike here yeah. our build bike sweet so we'll be an expert by that <laughs> yeah but yeah so i was just looking at these uh suspension settings that's sure enough they're sag but there's no way you'd want it eight to twelve millimeters we would have had to crank that in so far and it'd be so springy it's yeah already so springy i don't know we're gonna go by race tech sags specs yeah. I just wanted to show like what a mm -hmm. worksheet would look like. Okay. So you want to put your front free length. I'm going to guess because this guy's stay on. And our front was 115. Mm -hmm. And it's millimeters. Then we took our F1 measurement, which was 77. And then our F2 was 78. We divide them. We got 77.5, so then we just subtract 115 minus 77.5, and that gives us our sag. That was 37.5 millimeters, and this is our sag. And the customer would hang on to this document, uh, Zach? For yeah. The records, or? As you get better as a rider, or if you're at a racetrack mm -hmm. where you're con where you're continually trying to shave off a tenth of a second or you're hitting the same patch over and over again. Mm -hmm. you, once you get good enough, you could tell the difference between 37 and 35 or 37 and 34 even. So you might come yeah. in and be like, all right, that was, the whole thing with suspension is you kind of go one way. So we'd keep making it tighter and tighter and then you'd be like, all right, this thing's skipping all over the place. Yeah. So we'd drop it back the other way and you're like, oh, it's too mushy. And then you pick somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And that's really all you can do. So it's important that you have it written down so you know where you started at. Yep. And then you can make your changes from there. Uh, then the rear, which was simpler, we just put our rear free length, which we measured as 615. And then there's only one measurement with that because we don't have to count for stiction. The um, bearings inside the linkage are almost always in great shape on a street bike. Yeah. And what did we get? We got 580. And then you just subtract 615 minus 580 gave us 35 millimeters. Yep. 
which according to race tech is good according to bmw they want that down to 8 to 12 so we would have had to really really crank that spring yeah. probably almost would be into the next spring rate oh, if wow. we went for that 8 to 12 i don't know why that's really tight i'd be interested to see their explanation as to why and uh yeah that's really it that i can think of but just wanted to show how a worksheet would look yeah. how the math looks all right cool man well, thanks again, Zach. Yep, no problem. We'll catch you in the next video. Catch ya. All right, so that was Zach educating us once again. And if you couldn't tell, the weather here is totally fantastic. I had to make sure I was recording. All right, thank you guys so much for viewing this video. You can support the New Bike Build Series by clicking on the link in the description. Many, many, many more videos of this bike being dressed up and parts being added to it are coming. And it's all going to lead to us giving this bike away to one of you awesome viewers. We already gave away three motorcycles. This will be number four. And it will also be our very last 2018 S1000RR. So go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel by clicking subscribe. New videos are always uploaded to my channel. Stay tuned for more. And as always, thanks for viewing. We'll catch you next time on the new Bike Build Series.